K-State comes away in Houston with an inexcusable loss. The Cats drop to the Cougars 24-19, and if you're Chris Kleiman and anybody wearing purple, you do not want to see Willie Fritz's face ever again on the other sideline. A nightmarish, ugly game two years ago at home against Tulane where K-State lost after they couldn't do much on offense. Here they find themselves today at TDECU Stadium in a very similar situation where the weather also aided some of K-State's failures. And also, I mean, we got to be honest, K-State did a lot of this to themselves too. We saw some of the concern that came with it. West Virginia, they did not run the ball well, but you could tell yourself, well, West Virginia, good run defense. You were bombing it against them. You took, you know, a, a part of weak spot, fine. Okay, KU had some explosives, but we all knew watching that game that K-State wasn't great on the ground against KU. And then here today, it was atrocious, and that's where Chris Kleiman went after the game, discussing K-State's struggles today. Yeah, when you can't run the ball in this kind of weather, it doesn't set you up for success. And it's not like Houston ran the ball like exceptional today. But Houston was able to get some explosives. They had a 28-yard run. They had the 41-yard run to win the game. And they did enough and just sustained the run enough that they were able to pop a big one. And that's what K-State's biggest disadvantage was today is that they weren't able to pop a big run. They weren't able to really run in general. It was just an all-around pretty crappy day for K-State's offense. And the weather probably plays a little bit into it. But at the same time, you have to at least find a way. You're up 19 to 10 with 12 minutes left in the game. That's a situation where I know that Chris Kleiman said that they weren't able to run the ball, so that's why they threw it on that, in that situation where you throw the interception. But, that, but there's so many things that can go wrong when you throw the ball in this kind of weather as opposed to running it. Th that is the rare situation where I think that every K-State fan – and coach, and even us, would have been okay if K-State runs the ball three times there and punts because Houston wasn't able to do really anything on offense up to that point. And the last thing that you needed to do was give them belief. And in a game like this where you were more talented than the other team, the worst thing that you can do is screw around. And that's kind of what K-State did all day. Houston was daring K-State to win the game and take advantage and take control. And they couldn't do it. And a lot of that falls on the offense. Yeah, I mean, the offense, they set themselves up to be in bad spots. They couldn't run the ball. Just to highlight what we're talking about here, Houston only threw the ball 11 times today. By the way, they were 11 of 11 throwing the ball. One ball that did hit the turf was a horrendous P.I. penalty by Keenan Garber. At least act like you're trying to make a play on the ball. That was pretty ridiculous from the K-State secondary. But then you look around and you say, okay, K-State was stuck in some not-so-good field position situations today where you go and look, their second drive, they were at their own 17 to start. They had some later at their own 16, their own 10, their own 19, and all of those drives drives ended in, in punts um, except the one you know that uh, was not very good. So they struggle there, and you talked about field position. Houston, they were set up for success with field position all day long. Yeah, K-State did not win the hidden yardage, and punting is really becoming an issue. Simon McClannon was not good today, and because of that, Houston's average starting field position in the second half is aided a lot by the interception, but their average starting field position was their own 42. K-State's was their own 24. So, I mean, that's 18 less yards that Houston had to do all day in the second half. So, so you look at that, and a part of that is punting. Part of that is just not being able to get a, a first down. And K-State struggled to get first downs today in the second half. Yeah, the second half for K-State, they end up with two drives that they score on. It came in the first four possessions of the half. Uh, they end up going out – or, excuse me, no, they only score on one in the second half. That was the field goal. But in terms of field position, they had two drives where you would say field position – was okay or they came out and played well the field goal that they got and then the first drive where they end up turning it over on downs in the second half that was maybe an indicator of things aren't going very well here but 
kind of had to do it because the kicking situation had been terrible all day. Not to Chris Tennant's fault, but Mason Olguin su- struggled snapping the football. And then Simon McClannan struggled getting the ball down. Both of those guys had poor performances, and then it didn't help. That McClannan really didn't help K-State out, out in the punt game. None of his punts were what you would, I guess, assume as being special and helping K-State out where, boy, it feels like the opponent – a lot this season has gotten either fortuitous bounces against K-State or K-State's doing something wrong in terms of how are you making the punter uncomfortable, how are you fielding punts. Just disastrous day all around for K-State. They That was an ugly performance, and it's only the third time since Chris Kleiman took over at K-State that they have lost to a team with a losing record, 2019 at home against West Virginia, and then 2020 on the road at Baylor, which was a disaster in itself of the season. But this this one feels even worse, I think, than any of those did, just because this team still had a lot to, to play for. It felt like they were a better team than those. I mean, 2019, they weren't playing to get to a conference title. 2020, the season was shot by the time they got to Waco because of all the other stuff going on with COVID. But you came into today with a chance to control your own destiny to play in Arlington. Iowa State loses to Texas Tech in bad weather up in Ames, and yet you're not able to find a way to do it, and you play easily your worst game of the season because I'm not sure there's a single player that can walk out of this stadium tonight for K-State and say that they played a good game or that they gave their best effort tonight. It was putrid all around. I, I think this game also feels worse because K-State gave that game away. Houston Houston won it and made plays to win it, and that, that's, I guess, where I'm – kind of struggling with I saw a few people say that K-State kind of played not to lose uh when it was 19 to 10 that's that's how you're supposed to play in a game like this if it if you're playing not to lose I think K-State runs the ball three times and punts and and makes Houston have to drive the length of the field they were still being pretty aggressive they just couldn't do anything on offense and it is hard right now because they're such a run heavy team that they can't run the ball right now for anything that like they have to find something during this bye week because if they're going to be a run-first team, they have to be able to run the ball. And they, they couldn't. And, and it wasn't just a DJ Giddens or a Dylan Edwards thing. Because Avery Johnson also couldn't run. So it, it was just all around a very bad day for the K-State offensive line. And, and ultimately, that, that's what loses them the game. Because if they were able to sustain a little bit more running, you probably don't have to throw when it's 19-10 to 10 with 12 minutes yeah. left. Yeah, the K State had to throw the ball 39 times compared to Houston's 11 today. That's not very good. Uh, you factor in this too. I mean, the longest run for K State today, Dylan Edwards had a 13 yard run. You look on the other side, Zeon Chris had a 41 yard run, and then DJ Butler had a 28 yard run. So the explosive runs, that's how you win a game like this where can you bust through. K-State wasn't able to do it because the only way they were going to move the ball was through the air. You can't throw the ball in this weather. And that comes back to the offensive line, which people were denying it on Twitter or wherever else when earlier in the game I said that happened because of a short yardage situation that K-State's offensive line cannot handle. It bore out again that that's exactly what took place. K-State just couldn't handle the run game with their offensive line. They're, they're struggling in that department. They really have all year, but now it's gotten to the point where K-State can't even run the ball when you're beyond the 20-yard line. Yeah, and this is a bad game, especially you look. And I, we've been so hard on the defense all season, especially in these wins, because it feels like they're kind of winning and the defense is like patching it together. This game, the defense plays – really really well for three and a three and probably three quarters quarters Mm -hmm. and and the one big play that they really allowed was that 41 yard run because you look at it houston still only had 121 yards total rushing on three yards of carry with a 40 with a 41 yard run k-state only 2.6 yards per carry in a terrible weather game you have to be able to run the ball why 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 did iowa state beat k-state in the snow last year because they could pop explosive runs. And and think about how much throwing K-State had to do in that. I think Ben Sennett had nine catches in that game. K-State was playing with fire last year in that game. It burnt them, but not as bad as it burnt them today because that was at least a decent Iowa State team. And that weather, I think you can use the snow as a, a more fluky excuse than the rain today. The rain here... K-State has no excuses because that should have set up to play into their hands. It's not like they were fumbling the ball. They threw interceptions because 
it's tough to throw the ball in, in these conditions. I, I do want to bring up a couple of things because the offense had a terrible day. That's, that's noted. The special teams errors play such a significant role in this loss, too, because think about – Look, it, it wouldn't have changed K-State's deficit. They were down five. You ended up leaving four points out there. But what it would have done is once again afford K-State late in the game the opportunity to turn to Chris Tennant and use his leg to maybe try and sneak out with a win and go get three points. Instead, those last couple of possessions, K-State was having to play for six. And, again, tough to do in these conditions. Then you flip it to the defense. You're right, they were good most of the day, but – the explosives they gave up, for the most part, were inexcusable. The touchdown run should not have happened. Early in the game that set up one of Houston's first scores, a massive pass play on, was it fourth down for fourth Houston? And fourth and one. How do you let that happen with Zeon Chris, who is not a throwing quarterback by any means, and Houston's receivers haven't even been that good this year. They're fine. They're, they have some playmakers at times, but they're not even as good as what they had last year. So this game is pretty reflective of the struggles that K-State has right now. They all came together in one game, and uh, that's why they're walking out of here 24-19 losers, and all of a sudden in the driver's seat of the race to Arlington is BYU in Colorado. And you talked about just the big plays and special teams that were bad. It, it kind of goes back to all around because K-State wasn't able to win the hidden yardage. I mean, you look at it, Houston averages 43.7 yards per punt, K-State 39.8, and then you factor in that Houston's offense was able to get a few first downs before they sputtered out. And when K-State's offense was bad, they were likely getting in a, in a three and out situation. And, and then you add in not being able to punt well and it's just a disaster because you lose field position by that big of a gap. Yeah, it's – I don't know. There's there's a lot of things to dissect from today's game. K-State now, they get a couple of weeks to move on and get ready for Arizona State, who will not be an easy test anymore. If you can lose this game to Houston, you can lose it home to Arizona State. K-State has to figure out their problems in a hurry. If you want – the glass half full thought process on all of this is that since Iowa State loss, they lo that does you a solid at least in terms of if you think BYU, well not BYU, count them out of this, but Colorado will lose one more time because K-State will have the tiebreaker over Colorado. Texas Tech, I think since it just two losses in Big 12 play, I'm not worried about them. They will lose again. So... In some way, over these final three games, K-State is still going to have an opportunity, but right now Colorado has an easier schedule setting up, and once again, you are rooting for somebody else to take care of business for you. Similar to last year, too many mistakes, do you in? And uh, here K-State sits walking out of another road game, mightily defeated with an ugly performance just like they did in Provo at the start of conference play. That that will do it for us. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online. If you want more coverage of the Cats' loss, head over to On3, find kstateonline.com. You can also watch Chris Kleiman, Avery Johnson, and Keegan Johnson after the game today over right here on the KSO YouTube page. We'll be back again on Sunday talking some more Cats. Probably going to talk quite a bit of basketball. Let's talk about basketball, folks. The season starts on Tuesday. That sounds a lot more fun than thinking about football right now. Cats lose 24-19.